This episode is brought to you by TurboTax. TurboTax experts make all your moves count, filing with 100% accuracy and getting your max refund guaranteed. So whether you started a podcast like this one, side hustled your way to concert tickets, or quit your job to stream video games online full time, switch to TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Hi, it's Dave here. This is my wife, Kathy. Hello. And this is The Cinema, the podcast where we walk home from the movies. We are driving today, admittedly. Uh, and we're going to go see a movie I had not heard of until earlier today when Kathy said, do you want to go see this movie with Paul Mescal and Saoirse Ronan? And then I thought... Maybe, I guess. And then she said, it's a sci-fi. And I said, when is it on? <laughs> but this is what's so sad about the actress strike, because I would love to see Paul Mescal and Saoirse Ronan on a press tour together. Like, they're, they're like... Some of Ireland's finest. Yeah, like, two of the best actors out of Ireland. Um, I'd love to see them talking about a film together. I'd love to see them together. The only thing I saw them do together was they watched one of the Ireland rugby matches together in a pub and put a picture of themselves up and I feel like that was them being like we have a movie coming out <laughs> <laughs> but but we can't say it because yeah. we're striking so um, it's an awful shame but I, I don't know much about it either to be honest because of like just the lack of publicity I don't want to know anything I want I to just, go in blind I mean I don't I know it's sci-fi tell the me o- nothing the only other thing I know was that it's Gareth Davis who directed it do you know him no he what directed that? that Dev Patel movie Lion Oh, we liked that. Yeah. We oh my both. god, that was a devastating movie. Yeah, we both liked that. That's all I know about it, to be honest. Um, so we've not much to say. I absolutely love Saoirse Ronan and Paul Mescal, so I'm thrilled, like really thrilled, to see they're in a film together. It's a shame Barry Keoghan isn't in it as well. Um, but two out of three ain't bad. It starts in two minutes. <laughs> it's six thirteen. It starts in two minutes. Just hit a red light. I'm feeling a little nervous. Um, and Kathy ambitiously decided to pre-order uh, some popcorn and drinks in a cinema that I'm not going to name, but is notorious for its v- ridiculous queues. What? On a conce- Saturday evening? For, for, for concessions. There'll be no queues on a Saturday evening. <laughs> oh yeah, of course yeah. not. Um, so I'm going straight in. I'm going straight in. I'm not missing a beat of this. <laughs> yeah. Good luck to you. Um, okay, and see you all after we have watched... You should explain why you sound weird. I just have a very sore throat. (laughs) So this is the perfect activity for me to be doing. Bye. Bye. Ken? Expecting anyone? I need to have an intimate understanding of your marriage. The good and the bad. I promise it's confidential. It's between you and me. Do you feel happy here? Of course I'm happy here. Aren't you? Do you feel you know how she would react in every situation. I've always had this fantasy that there's something else out there for me. Do you want to live mundane lives or do you want to be part of something special and unique? You've been selected to live up there. (laughs) Okay, well, you're wasting your time because we haven't even been on an airplane. She dated. I should should clarify. I'm talking about you here, Junior. Only you. All right, hello, welcome back. We're in the car. We have seen Faux, starring Paul Mescal and Saoirse Ronan. Kathy, why don't you take the job now of explaining to everyone what this film is about without any spoilers? And there won't be any spoilers, by the way, for anyone who's listening for the first time until I indicate for Spoiler Street. Um, well, so neither of us knew what it was about before we went in, and um, I think you're it's probably a good a good film not to know what it's about. But I'll just say that it's set in some form of dystopian future, as most films are. And uh, Paul Mescal and Saoirse Ronan are a married couple, and um, a strange man arrives at their house and offers them an interesting proposition. Um, Ooh, that's an intriguing way to describe it. Yeah, okay. Um, I which it sounds a bit like knock at the cabin. Um, it does have those actually, kind of vibes at the, at the um, beginning, But it is nothing like that movie no. really And I think we actually shouldn't speak for too long on this one Before we get to Spoiler Street Because there's an awful lot to spoil And I don't want to um, But just briefly on, on the kind of impressions of it um, Of course uh, Paul Mescal and Saoirse Ronan are amazing 
Um, I love seeing them together on screen. I think the first 10 minutes of the film, I was on such a high of just seeing those two together on screen that like I kind of didn't even care what I was watching. Um, I was very intrigued by the beginning of the film. The longer it went on, I got a little bit concerned about the film that I thought, oh God, is this actually bad? <laughs> and then by the end I loved it so I had quite a roller coaster with this film Dave what did you think like top line and we're going to really quickly speak before we go to spoiler street yeah I, I loved it it's one of those it's a real thinker it's going to stick with me for a while I know what you mean I would describe my experience with the film I was never I never thought is this bad but what I was thinking a lot was um, I don't know what's happening right it's one of those films where you're you're confused by um, <laughs> everything that's happening <laughs> at most times, <laughs> and and that's actually I find that quite a um, a good experience at the cinema to be out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. and yeah. to not really know what's happening. Um, and it's the I, kind of film that I thought if I was at home by myself and I thrown it on, there was a point where I might have just turned the film off. Yeah, but 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 I think this is really good I think it's worth um, a look if you're interested in any way just go in blind it does all come together very satisfyingly and it's a real thinker of a movie it, 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 which we'll cover in spoiler straight but it, it tackles some real interesting and big questions uh, from a sci-fi lens but it's a very this is a very small very human movie there's only three actors in the whole thing um, and it's all really much set in one location for the most part. At so one point I thought it was based on a play, but then it said at the end it's actually based on a book, but it has the feel of a play, doesn't it? Yes, yes, very much so. And what did you think of Paul Mescal and Sergio Ronan together? Oh my God, they're amazing. Yeah. They're incredible actors. Now, I will admit to being disappointed when they first both spoke in what I can only describe as a nondescript American accent. Same! Why couldn't they be Irish? Yeah. I appreciate the story you said, however, in America... But but why not just set it in rural Ireland? It would have the same effect. Now the we'll, same we'll talk, we'll talk. I'd like to talk maybe in spoil glamour. There's no glamour in this I'm movie. Um, um, but we will talk about it in Spoiler Street as to but perhaps then, you know why what? it why it makes more sense. They're both Oscar-nominated actors. Like they can put on American accents very convincingly. I mean, our American audience can let us know if you think otherwise. I thought both accents sounded I, very good. I, I'll just say I don't know why this needs to be set in nondescript um, rural America I think the American stuff worked for me we'll get into it um, we'll get into it in a minute and the um, the other actor Aaron Pierre I thought was very good I thought the three of them were very good together yeah. however he should have been Barry Keoghan <laughs> no he would have been wrong he would have been I amazing mean, Are well, you, maybe, he'd have yeah, been incredible in this role he's so good in this kind of role no, but we, okay, but we'll talk about it more on Spoiler Street. But that character needs, or this actor brought to it anyway. I think a real sense of um, authority and power, but is kind of slightly off. I don't know. Barry Keoghan is t- too young for that role. I think no, he's, he's not, younger than them. He's younger no, than. No, he's thirty, and this dude's thirty. I just googled him. Oh well, they're the same age. Okay, but just because you're the same age as someone doesn't mean you you can portray a certain type of person on screen. No, I, 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 not not to diss Barry Keoghan, incredible actor. I don't know, but look. I just think anyway. it should have been him, and it would have been my absolute dream. Just a triple bill of Irish people doing American exactly. accents. Exactly. It's terrible, um, though. It's terrible. No, because the third guy in an English accent. Yeah, probably. Yeah, why did he get his own accent? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's not even English. Maybe he's American. Anyway, um, I'm devastated for them. They haven't done a press round. And it's terrible for anyone who cares about the Late Late Show not being able to get any good guests since it launched. This so would have been... Who cares about the Late Late this Show? This would have been the Late Late Show's moment. It would have oh, had the two yeah. of them on. Come on. We're sitting in a cinema in oh, Cork. Sorry, Kelly, what are you talking about? The Late Late Show is on now. Oh, they can't go. Sorry. Right. That's what I'm saying. We're sitting in a cinema in Cork. Opening night. Or opening weekend. Two of Ireland's biggest actors are in a film. And there's nobody in the cinema because nobody knows it's out. It would have been the Late Late Show's best get yet. Like, I literally Googled the cinema listings earlier, saw this and heard of this, albeit I knew they were coming up on a film together. I by no means knew the name of it and I by no means it was coming out this weekend. Yeah. And we have a film podcast. Yeah, exactly. So, so what hope does the average but public I'm telling stand? you, it should have been on the Late Late. It should have been a big deal last night and I'm devastated for everyone it wasn't. 
Oh, yeah. we support the writer's strike. You're, you're, you're I right. I mean, the actor's strike. We support, we support it. both strikes, yeah. but one has been resolved. <laughs> um, but I will say, um, yeah, you're right. We've got a platform. So go see this movie, please. <laughs> actually, go see. Go Our out. audience is actually bigger than the Lay Late's audience as well. <laughs> see this movie. It is really, really interesting. It has two, it has three incredible performances from three great actors. It is a, a great script. It's very interesting. You'll be you'll be pushed out of your comfort zone. You won't know what's going on for three quarters of it, um, but it's well worth it. Yeah. How's that? Right. Fantastic plug, Dave. And we are being paid by the movie to promote it. We're not. Right. So on to indicate on the spoiler street, please. We will be back in a minute. You may hear an ad. We're back. This episode is brought to you by TurboTax. TurboTax experts make all your moves count. Filing with 100% accuracy and getting your max refund guaranteed. So whether you started a podcast like this one, side hustled your way to concert tickets, or quit your job to stream video games online full time, switch to TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Dave, spoilers. Spoilers for this movie, <laughs> right. Firstly, faux. Why do you think it's called faux? I don't know. I don't when know I first either. told Dave about the movie, he thought it was faux. Is it F A U X? And I actually think that would have been a better title. Oh yeah, that would have made a lot more sense. <laughs> so oh, I oh, think hang on. Sorry, sorry. because, and now we're on Spoiler Street. Turn it off. We don't want to spoil this film for you. There's an actual big twist in this film that Dave spoiled for me during the film by guessing it and then um, whispering it to me, which is the thing that you know you're not allowed to. Do. But 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 I had to. You didn't. <laughs> I was I had to livid get that you didn't give me the moment, oh, my own moment, sorry. to guess the twist. And I'm livid. And but I. But it's will... fun to just guess these it's things. Fun. If we were at home, we'd be guessing it. We do that at home. We you'd sh- you'd just shout out, "Oh, he- he's the robot!" Or you ruined this film for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really. Um, I'm anyway, sorry. so spoilers. But spoilers, the problem is, spoilers. if I'd said, but then if it happened to the end, if we got to the end. And then I said, I actually guessed it halfway through. Would you believe me? I wouldn't care. Because I'd be <laughs> concerned about my own viewing experience. Anyway, I think the thing is, she's sleeping with the enemy. He's the to quote my favourite movie. Is it? He's well, I don't really know. really foe, though. Anyway. But then who's the foe? I don't know. That's why I say I don't, don't understand the title. <laughs> well, um, because the, what, I, okay, what I love about this film is, there's bits of it that I found confusing and I didn't particularly like and it kind of almost distracted me from the film right and I appreciate it's adapted from a book and that's a complicated thing to do so they're like so Paul Mescal is going to space right and because he's going to space and nominally albeit this won't be the reason they say oh we'll make like a clone of you that can live at home with your wife to keep her company right which which, which they just your man mentioned offhand That's at the I dinner mean. halfway through the movie they spent so like, long they, what? before they got <laughs> and before laughed. they got to that bit that's when I was like this movie's really crap because just get to space or don't get to space what am I watching and then I love the film completely pivoted and had nothing to do with space at all and was all about the clone and I think if we'd seen a trailer actually that might have gotten me through the first half of the movie because I'd have been like kind of dying for the clone bitch come on but in a way not knowing it was like when it happened we both turned to each other and went what the fuck <laughs> we just laughed <laughs> we literally just laughed like, out loud what yeah. oh by the way we're making a clone of you so in a way oh, I, I wish they'd spent way less time with the space thing that didn't matter and kind of got into the clone thing a bit sooner um, but well, okay but, but now so the clone is the clone is y- your partner gets cloned but they're more like when you first met them they're like your partner at the beginning of your relationship not your partner at your existing point in time yeah which now, that's is a really in- it's a really interesting idea yeah. it reminded me a lot of that Black Mirror episode with Donald Gleeson and uh, Hayley Atwell do you remember that one yeah so my, well I guess minor spoilers for that but this that, that deals with a similar idea but in a different in a much different lens where that is it's the same situation, but it's your um, spouse's online sort of per- persona, personified. Oh, whereas, yeah, yeah. Whereas this is, yeah, a, a, a sna- as you said, a snapshot or, of um, an earlier version or the best no, parts of your... I also, I don't think it's necessarily earlier. I think what it's interesting is I think it's like what your partner would be like if they hadn't been warned, how they would view you 
if they hadn't been worn down by spending like 10 years with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You're that's fresh exactly to them. Him. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 it's like when your partner's been on holiday. If you've not seen your partner for like two weeks yeah. and you like have a really nice reunion. I think that's what was interesting. We learn, it's kind of peppered throughout the film and we learn at the end they've experienced loss together. I believe they've experienced child loss, although it's never explicitly said. Um, they've been together since they left school. They've had a really tough life. They're living in this kind of version of the future where there's been no rain. And then some kind of distressing stuff comes to light whereby actually Paul Mescal, the real one, seems to be quite controlling and doesn't let her play music like kind of some sick stuff like that but but all that aside we don't know like the twist in the film is that he's actually the clone the whole time that we're watching and I will never as long as I live forgive you for ruining that for me <laughs> but I thought we'd covered this off sorry no we haven't is this the po- well don't worry what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you clone <laughs> uh, from before the point that this happened. Okay. So, so then our relationship will be restored again. But what right. about like two months ago when you ruined the entirety of Hijack for me by giving out about it the whole time while I loved watching it? Well, then you did the same for me for the bear, <laughs> so we're even. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the co- I think what what was really good about this, like any good sci-fi, is when there's a concept that is explored through characters' relationships. What threw me off and what just drags the film down for me a bit is the the going to space world is limited resources all that bit didn't matter like I, they wasted time on that well, it's backdrop no 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 but but it didn't it never mattered you just thought that that, that it was going to matter to the movie but it's but just, it matters that, to me the a, viewer no but but it, but in the end the movie that we got it didn't matter and what did matter was um you know this this new entity that they created which was an an, an experiment like we don't even realize because he says it so offhandedly halfway through the film by the way we're going to make this bio thing so we as viewers are like oh so this is just par for the course but it's a brand it, it appears to be a brand new experimental thing there's people there drinking champagne and toasting the success of this thing that's what the movie is about it's about it's about creating life um and it, it being so convincing and there's parallels to artificial intelligence here a little bit that's happening right now where we're in a race to create very convincing um, you know beat the Turing test and create uh, intelligence that can fool people of humans that that is a human this this entity whatever convinced you know it, it f- uh, made hen fall in love with with it and also what's interesting is but like you, you mentioned this pairs well with the creator potentially and I think this is a lot more interesting than the creator it addresses all of these issues full on well like, no but this is slightly different because this isn't AI this is a clone but it's the same thing it's like we human beings invented life in, the, in that movie they created uh, robotic artificial intelligence it, in this movie they created um, biological replica with somebody else's memories and, Could you and, imagine there was two Paul Mescals in the world? Like, what a world it would be. <laughs> but what's so interesting is, like, there's so much going on here that you can tackle. Nature versus nurture. Um, like, those those two people are, by all accounts, like, identical. But, but the uh, older, the or the quote-unquote real one, is, as you pointed out, very, very different because of lived-in experience. Because of those ten years of... of you know, living with his wife and the spark going away or whatever it is or just being like worn down by life. That that newer version of him doesn't have that. It's more philosophical. It's more quizzical. But it's it, more young. It seems like a younger person. Like he's even like, let's go away. Let's go somewhere new. Let's yes. do something. He's not like, this is our house now and we have to stay in our house because we built a life for ourselves here. And I, I think the new one might know about the child loss. I think they mightn't have given him that memory. I mean, I didn't. I didn't really get that from the text. I completely I, got it because she was s- kepping by this tree and like pouring water on it. And I said to you, I think they have a kid buried there. Yeah. No, no. no I, I think it could make really sense and it would and fit the narrative our, really well. But I don't think our family's buried on this land. I know, but I don't think the movie gives you enough to draw that conclusion. But I, I think it. I think you're right. It would make perfect sense and would really inform the story even more. Yeah, I don't know. Really I didn't. I didn't explicit. At no point was I was I like, oh, okay. They definitely went through that. But I can see that happening. Yeah. You know. I think this film needs to be watched. I've got a. I've got a four movie binge that you need to do back to back all the same day. 
Okay. Okay, go. So the creator. Yeah. Megan. <laughs> yeah. Multiplicity. <laughs> multiplicity. And then this. You think multiplicity is the definitive clone yeah, I do. movie from? Uh, <laughs> this is better than all those movies in terms of like actual subject matter and like addressing. Like that's what's so interesting about this symbolism of the insect. And I didn't get the insects. Here's, well, here's my take on it: that both the, you know, quote unquote clones that we see in the movie, whatever you want, you want to call them, um, I want to call them quote clones, are both fascinated by this life, and don't. In both instances, um, they're expected to. The humans want to destroy it, so. Uh, the Circe Ronan, the human, the first time that they encounter this bug, she go, she says, oh, we probably have an infestation. I'm going to go check our room. She's on the hunt to get rid of these things. Paul Mescal, the, the clone version of him, is staring at him. He's enamored by it and he wants to preserve it, protect it. It's so still. And it's this it's the same exact reverse situation later. She's looking at it. She's enamored by it. And then Paul Mescal comes along and crushes it. And what's another line in the movie earlier? Um... Sir Ronan the acknowledges that the whole reason um, that all of this is happening is because humans took from the world. You know what? Do, what did he? You know the uh, Terence says something like, "You know the world has given us." You know he's doing his marketing spin through the through the whole movie. The world has given us all it can. She says, "No, we take it." So that's what's interesting is that human beings take and take and destroy and destroy this new form of life that we have created seems to perceive things differently. They also seem to be quite disgusted by snots. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that, was Sorry, that was an incredible monologue. Okay, so first of all, like I think Paul Mescal should win every Oscar anyway, but like, you know the way when they always do the Oscars, like uh, like a monologue, oh, yeah, and it's that's like... That's the Oscar moment. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. they're talking about this really intense, like grief or like incident or like this violent thing that happened to them and in this one you think that's going to happen and then he's just like there's snots on tissues and plates and like body he's so disgusted by bodily functions but right that's that's because he he's is a robot well well he's not i don't think there's no, any, he's, he's not a robot but whatever he is he is apart from humans and he is observing them he even says the words i am i observed you know, I've been observing people. He says it as somebody who is detached, like yeah. an alien. And they are different. Human beings are different to him and they're disgusting to him. So what I'm saying is the movies that you've all linked and the creator, which refuses to address anything in a meaningful way, but is an entertaining and good-looking movie. But th- th- that's the whole idea of uh, human beings create a uh, new life Um that has its own right to exist. And just like Paul Mescal crushes the bug, the new life that they create, we celebrate and we toast it and we cheers each other and then we wrap it in a plastic that bag was sick. and kill it and send it to be studied. That like, last scene, no, the worst part is Davey wasn't even being killed. They're gonna keep him alive and just oh test on God, him forever. Oh, you're right. That's why they put the air hole in. It was harrowing. And I think her screaming outside, the real Paul Mescal who kind of comes in laughing at the beginning and then he's a, he's like, what the... He's kind of like, I think he's more disturbed by his wife's reaction to the scene than the actual scene. It also made me think, okay, clearly you're, he did go to space for a year for what, I don't know. But the real thing was actually what was happening in their home. Why was there only like one guy who just spent all his time there? I'm a bit confused by the mechanics of it all, but I, I, can, I can answer that. Why? Well, I can give you the answer. I think um, everyone, when when this is all a you know a success, um, everyone comes over and pats him on the back, slaps him on the back. He is the mastermind. He's the mastermind. Yeah. He he is the um, the um, what's his name from Ex Machina character with the the beard, the handsome guy that everyone loves. Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac. He's the Oscar Isaac mad scientist character this is his this is his invention that's why he's personally there that's why he's also just like that Oscar Isaac character he's a kind of eccentric and quirky I thought he was a fascinating character he was, and he changed so much as the film went on yes like I found him fascinating to behold and it was like he got really kind of very disrespectful towards 
Paul Mescal as the film went on because he's obviously like I made you you're not even real yes. so I thought that was all very interesting it's the kind of movie I'd love to watch again and with that with the lens I think it's it, it's a, it would be a really rewarding second viewing because so because the way he looks at him is kind of there's a curiosity and a respect and a but fascination also ownership. but also exactly but there's exactly. a point remember where he like puts his mouth over Paul Mescal and like knocks him out and all the I people think that are in was the room. Paul Mescal's um Dream. dream but actually now that you mention it probably what did, probably it. did happen but then how yeah. was he yeah it was all like all that stuff I want to rewatch again and I love then like I absolutely love like we get a sense that their marriage hadn't maybe been that happy but then we actually see them and like the first night Paul Mescal's back and he's literally like you cheated on me and then they hear the rain outside and she's so happy she's spinning around in the rain and he's he puts her down he's like look at you and he yeah. just walks in again and and it's just that and she's like I do not belong here and then she leaves in the blank letter that she talked about earlier in the film which I was like yay fists in the yeah. air like you go girl that's great and then I love that Paul Mescal then makes a clone of her yeah it's hard that's chilling, chilling. I found it really chilling and yeah. he puts her back in her box because yeah. he's like I didn't once she learned how to play the piano I didn't know who she was and like basically once she wasn't like a 17 year old schoolgirl who was like in his thrall and yeah. he couldn't control her so that was very sinister and then but I really liked that our last shot was like her on the airplane leaving and I thought there was a bit of hope in the end of the film between the rain and her getting because yeah. he was like she'd never go on an airplane and she's like well you've never been on one either but she says that uh, she says that in a voiceover you know I had to become a different person she changes but that's that's what human experience is we change at, mm-hmm. and that's why they both change they were different people at the beginning of their marriages to, to where they are now but no, but it's she's not, a different person they again. both she, want the other person to be they both want them it to be, have been okay that they change but not that the other one's changed yes because she doesn't exactly. like the new him and he doesn't like the new her yeah. they don't go together anymore exactly and that happens when people end relationships and everyone in a relationship is like but at the beginning it was great and this yeah. film's fascinating so it's exploring beginning versus ending of relationships it's exploring kind of post-apocalyptic stuff very lightly though not like, really really in the background not really and then it's just exploring the many talents of Paul Mescal it's a very it's a very um, like small human movie like it's about the human experience I yeah. think underneath all of this and I think it's got it's a really interesting because all the stuff I said a minute ago about is is quite cynical mm-hmm. like it's it, I think it doesn't explore the environmental stuff but it's it's a backdrop which is important to humanity's most destructive qualities mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah. um and but it's also celebrates humanity like Saoirse Ronan who becomes our main it's funny because we're kind of uh, Paul Mescal is kind of our protagonist or the clone of him is our protagonist for mm-hmm. the movie but then it shifts to keep focus to her and her experience and you yeah. realize she is you know very um uh she represents the best of humanity. Yeah. You know, she's she's out in the rain. That, that's the that's the best of humanity. I love Saoirse Ronan. Being out in the rain with your hands up. I haven't <laughs> seen her. I don't think I've seen her in the cinema in a couple of years. For whatever reason, I've not oh, seen her in a couple of years. She's wonderful. She's unbelievable. Like, she's so talented. Um. Anyway, we need to go. We're home. We're literally sitting in our driveway like two creeps on a stakeout of our own <laughs> home. Um, so let us know what you thought about this film if you've seen it I hope people have seen it uh, and I think a lot of people might like it because I went on to IMDB there to Google the name of the third actor because I couldn't remember who he was and I saw the Rotten Tomatoes guess what it is uh, I don't know 86 24% what <laughs> I know right what, from, I, from the audience or the critics I don't know it just popped up as 24% Rotten Tomatoes bet you it's audience bet you 24% audience Bet you ninety two percent critics. Okay, I just now I I've okay, spoken, now I'm, now I've I'm spoken on this podcast before that I think Rotten Tomatoes is a is a load of shite. Um, but uh, this is really interesting. But I'm, also fa- I'm also fascinated by it. <laughs> this is really interesting. While everyone uh, listens to me, go back to something that I was just on and I've already forgotten. Yeah. So Rotten Tomatoes, um, twenty four percent the tomato meter audience score not tracked yet. Because it's only just been released, so the the critic score is twenty four percent, and the audience score isn't tracked yet. Uh, yeah, but how many? Cri- this is really boring. Okay, this is so Sorry. boring. Anyway, 
Uh, tell us what you thought. I hope you saw it. I hope you enjoyed it or at least were a bit tickled by it. Um, come over to patreon.com forward slash the cinema where we're doing a ton of TV stuff at the moment. We've just reviewed all of the fall of the House of Usher. We are about to review Bodies uh, on Netflix, which we're enjoying. And we are also talking about celebrity documentaries. There's a lot of them over there. We're talking Beckham. We're talking Arnold. We're talking supermodels. Yeah. We're talking about How's the Kardashian. We're talking about the Jeez, Mary pa- Tyler Moore one. Um, I've watched a lot of them. So that's why we're doing a celebrity yeah. um, special. That's celebrity not, doc That's special. not there yet. I don't think we're going to have time to do that by the time this, well, no, this comes it's out. But coming out it's coming week, out Yeah, coming very, out very week. soon. Um, the Fall of the House of Usher, all of that is there. We're also just about to watch The First Wives Club. So this is a good time to come over to our Patreon and we have seven days free trial so see you over there not to mention you can go on you can scroll back if you join our Patreon scroll back you get about 50 movie retro movie reviews uh, you get like loads of full seasons of television that we've yeah, covered hundreds of episodes oh and For All Mankind's coming back <gasps> yes. season 4 in Can't a few wait. weeks so yeah. we'll be doing we'll weekly, do episodes weekly episodes on that, on that. okay uh, bye bye whatever we decide We'll be together. I'm Laura. I'm Lauren. And this is Go Love Yourself. And she went, you're 26. <laughs> I was like, size 26, yeah. And she was like, oh, right, right, that makes sense. This is the show where we're learning to love ourselves a little more and taking you along with us. I grew up never seeing anybody that looked like me and that made me feel like not part of society like almost like not a woman because I just never felt like I fit in if you've got a relative that is mean about your body Laura what do we say to them